Hey guys, Verbal Engine 95, recording live from your local county prison cell, and this is, this is going to be a fun one. Um, so the fight I am bringing you today is Alex Russo from Wizards of Waverly Place and Sabrina Spellman from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, one really cool thing I like about these two series is that their magic system, despite being you know, meant for, like, comedy, is actually really interesting, I think. They, um, because magic is, is considered, like, a science and an art. It's treated as, like, a, by the way, sorry for the blinding light in the corner there. Um, it's treated as, like, a complex art. It, it, like, has, uh, it has, like, limitations, but not limitations in the sense that, like, oh, this is, like, like alchemy like this is the balance of the universe it's just like by the properties of itself it it acts this way or that way and it's really it's like cooking almost right where like you can do all this stuff and and believe you're doing it right and then like you, you it, it doesn't matter right okay sorry for geeking out there about the two lamest shows i could possibly geek out about um, but yeah, we'll start with Alex Russo. So she is, so her family is that of wizards aside from her mom. So she's a wizard, a half wizard on her father's side. And, uh, both her brothers are also wizards. Um, she, however, won the family wizarding contest and, um, gets to become, you know, stay the, the family wizard while, the others just get to be kind of, like, magically inclined, you know what I mean? Like, they don't get to keep their powers, but they get to keep all of their, their knowledge of magic and all of that. It's weird. So, what, uh, that gives her some other abilities down the line, but it's not undeserved, because even though she's irresponsible and, and, and everything, she... Um, she is kind of a prodigy, right? She gets to, like, she just does have a natural affinity for complex magic. Um, and she's also, you know, just kind of a trickster anyway. So it's like, it, it kind of works. Um, her spells pretty much let her do anything, but it is like she has to know the spell for it. Though there are incantations that let her do vague magic right that she can pretty much be anything but she's not due to its simplicity and easiness to to cast uh she's not able to really control what the magic does so she'll just come up with a line or a rhyme rather uh and say this this is this and then it'll whatever happens happens um so, she can do more precise magic spells that have more precise effects, but she has to actually learn the specific incantation for it, and she has to, like, practice it. And there, again, there are side effects to using magic um, that she usually isn't aware of, but a lot of these is built into the spells themselves, right? By the property of what the spells are, like I was saying. So... For instance, um, her uh, spell that she uses to rewind time, uh, it tends to cause, it rewinds all time in general. Like, it rewinds it for the entire universe. But you just start feeling a sense of uh, deja vu from it, right? Um, her spell that... Uh, creates a duplicate of herself uh, until you completely master that spell there is the common side effect among wizards where one uh, whatever happens to the clone will happen to the to the user right so like if, if the clone gets punched in the face the user will feel it as well uh, she has mastered that spell so that that doesn't happen but still there's the um her, uh, the spell she uses to create a portal, 
uh, can be moved manually to like just basically be a wormhole for objects, but it can also remove entire spaces from existence if she's not careful. Uh, just things like that. Um, so a lot of her magic inherently has drawbacks, but those are the more reliable spells. Um, after she obtains the Russo family wand, uh, for being the family wizard, she's able to then do just more powerful spells like controlling the weather, geomancy. She even like created an alternate, uh, like an alternate timeline with it. So that, um, you know, so like she gets a lot more powerful there, but other than that, she's just a pretty clever but short-sighted and irresponsible wizard who um in a combat situation like this probably isn't isn't gonna be uh needed anywhere but um yeah oh and then the other the other downside to um her magic is that it does not work on plastic at all. It is, plastic is completely unaffected by, uh, all magic in general, which is kind of dumb, but okay. Uh, moving on to Sabrina. So Sabrina is a, uh, witch-human hybrid, um, and she, but don't let that fool you, because she is just as powerful as any other witch, um, but because of the nature of this union, the, uh, I believe, what was it, the Witch Council or Coven or whatever it was called, um, forbade her forever seeing her mother. And if she would ever look at her mother, uh, she, her mother would be turned into a, a ball of wax, uh, <laughs> as, uh, upon sight. And her father works with, uh, basically the equivalent of a, uh, magical secret agency, so she's, you know, so she's basically left to live with her, uh, her two aunts, um, who are, who are also witches, right? Um, witches generally are immortal and ageless. Sabrina being half human means that she can only live for potentially centuries. Um, and there are some other downsides to her being human we'll get into but essentially her magic is yeah just pretty much limitless um she can more or less uh it it does get tricky with uh magic with magic interfering with other magic um like for instance she couldn't just undo the coven spells but uh you know she can pretty much affect the entirety of the world with her magic like making people just change emotions, switching bodies, making it as if someone weren't there, just completely, yeah, she changes, like, the rules of reality. Um, there are some exceptions to this, like, for instance, magic is not less effective, but it gets, in, in Salem's words, it gets a little funky during the day, as in it doesn't, it's not as consistent and doesn't work necessarily as the way it's supposed to at some points so typically using magic at night is the more is the better option which again i think it's just such a cool lore tidbit um there are some other things like for instance her family line is has uh, a predisposition for being addicted to pancakes which is you know just a throwaway joke for a very special episode and um you know, some of her, uh, like, any spells that have to do with fortune um, can't completely change probability. So if she increases her luck at one point, she has to decrease her luck at another point. There are, again, just built-in rules. Um, other than that, being half-human, half-witch also just grants her the ability to levitate uh, naturally. Like, she can... Like, she floats when she jumps, basically. And also, she has a sense of divination, uh, which is not, like, something she has to put effort into, but it's not, like, clairvoyance where she can see future events. It's more like 
just a really, really good intuition where she'll just randomly know things without an explanation as to why. Um, but yeah, I mean, Sabrina has done some crazy things. She's, uh, I think she's been to both heaven and hell. She's caused a zombie apocalypse. Um, oh, and her magic at one point was able to affect, now this is where it gets tricky, because there was a four-show crossover between Sabrina, Boy Meets World, and two other shows I can't remember, where all four shows got sent back in time to different eras. So, if we're to believe that all of these shows are in the same universe, because they were all on ABC, uh, that's one thing, right? Because then she's just sending people from different parts of the country. If you, but if they're not, even though there was a Sabrina, there was an episode of Boy Meets World where Sabrina showed up. If they're not in the same universe, that means her magic affected four separate universes with the same spell. So, yeah. Uh, but getting into the analysis here, this is probably going to be a quick one. Um, so, both of these characters can pretty much do anything they want within certain limitations. Um, so, the real question isn't who can do more, it's who can't do more, right? Um, who has the most limitations on their abilities? So, right off the bat, uh, my mind goes to Sabrina then. Because uh, all both of these characters, a lot of their magic just cancels each other out, or, um, you know, they have a counter to each other. But... Like I said, a lot of Alex's magic comes with inherent drawbacks to it. Whereas Sabrina's usually doesn't. Her mat, she's usually just the victim of, like, be careful what you wish for, where she uses a spell and finds out that it's not actually what she wanted. Right? Um, which I would have to think in a war between two, like, absolute powers, the one with really no restrictions would have to be the one that wins. Also, uh, by the end of the series, well, no, because I believe Alex is an adult in the new show that's, like, a spinoff of, of Wizards of Waverly Place, but, um, also for, you know, with things like divination and, uh, and levitation. These are things Alex, at least to some degree, has done, but she has to actually use a spell for. Whereas Sabrina can just do these things um, naturally. And divination, I think, specifically would probably give her advantage. The levitation probably would as well. Um, because again, things like the deja vu caused by the time skip, she would... That would probably resonate with her as oh, I know what she's going to do next, and I know that she's going to skip time next. Um, yeah, so I think this is very close. These two, these two shows are very similar, and these two characters are very similar, but I think Sabrina just barely edges it out. But yeah, anyway, um, hope you guys have a good night. Verbal Engine 95, see ya.